Responding to requests for evidences that you get from the USCIS with your Form I-612 needs to be very serious. In order for you to do this, you will get a Form I-797, which is the receipt notice, and then this is your chance to prove to them that there's really a hardship claim that has solid evidences on your exceptional hardship. In this video, we are going to talk more about that. So let's dive in and let the journey begin. Hello everyone, good day. My name is Emery and welcome to Powerful Couple Journey where we talk about immigration process. In today's video, we are going to focus on the request for evidence when it comes to your Form I-612. I do remember we submitted our Form I-612 based on our experience. In June of 2021, we got a request for evidence after six months and we did make sure that we have accumulated a lot of evidences not just to prove our claim but of course to show that we are genuinely in love with each other and our marriage is legit so what are the things we prepare we are thinking about the timeline they gave us 60 days to respond to the request for evidence and we had hurriedly took all the chances that we can we had all our family members joined us and asked them for a letter that proves our relationship. Also, we have our monthly budget that we put together including our bank statement that has joint bank account under my name and under my spouse name which is a U.S. citizen. With that, we wanted to prove that there is really a hardship when it comes to our finances and to really tell the adjudicating officer or the USCIS officer that handling our case that we are really real and we wanted to prove our hardship claim when it comes to financial hardship. Then we gather evidences as well just like the psychological evaluation. I am so blessed because my husband is already seeing a psychotherapist under his aunt's psychotherapist and they were able to have some sessions that took place years prior from our marriage with that we were able to ask her the sessions that my husband has took place in her office and that is an assessment when it comes to psychological needs and anxiety and stress that if ever imposed with the 212 year rule to the J1 waiver, which is me, his wife, then he will really have a lot of PTSDs that he had encountered before, and this will have a very detrimental impact to the US citizen. Also, I was able to communicate with the EVP, which is the Exchange Visitor Program Committee in the Philippines through their email address and we exchanged messages regarding my employment. They stipulated that I am not an OFW because I am a Teacher Exchange Cultural Program and I got a J-1 visa. Thus, I am not entitled to any of the programs that unless if I will try my best to agree and be part of their program which is the SPIMS sa Pilipinas ikaw ang mamatser. However, there's no guarantee for me that I'll have an employment once I get back to the Philippines and fulfill the two-year home residency requirement. That's the other thing that I had screenshots and I proved that there's really a hardship when it comes to my case, when it comes to the employment I have in the Philippines. Also, just in case for a location, if my husband will have to go back with me to the Philippines, his employment will also have a great negative impact, especially that he's never been to 
any other countries aside from the U.S. He also says that his education level cannot suffice what is the requirements in order for him to have a stable job at least two years in my home country, which is the Philippines. So those are the things that we have put in our sworn statement letter and my husband's sworn statement letter, which is available in our website, powerfulcouplejourney.com, and a lot more evidences that you can try as a template if ever you are compelled to do it yourself. We also asked our pastor who married us in our location. He asked for us to draft the letter and we put all the things that is needed that has to suffice what is the USCIS is asking for the request for evidence. Remember, everything that the USCIS put in your request for evidences should be given strong, compelling arguments in order for you to overwhelm them and let them know that these evidences are real and you are not just claiming it as husband and wife, but of course, your community is also helping you and sharing their ideas that you are really for real and there's really a hardship once the 212E rule is imposed to the J-1, which is a J-1 visa holder. We also have articles that is printed from the internet showing the poverty, crime, and other safety reasons that will really impact the quality of life of the U.S. citizen once he has to relocate together with the J-1 towards the home country. So with that, we have the recent articles just like poverty, even though it's not really on your place, but think of it as the overall impact of the metro, which is Metro Manila. And that is my home country. I highlight every single words that could tell the USCIS officer that that is really a safety reason why we don't want to allow the US citizen to relocate with the J-1 to her home country, which is my country, the Philippines. We also indicate that we wanted to start our family here. And even though separated for two years will be too long for us, especially that we are really a real couple and we wanted to have our own house, our own properties, and have our children in the future. And that two years is really hard for us to think that because of the 212 year rule to your home residency requirement, I have to go back to my home country and that is far beyond the imagination of my husband that he doesn't want it and he would like to prove to the USCIS everything he can through paper and that is one of the strong compelling arguments we have. I do remember we have three packets for the request for evidence with the I-612 and this is what we have. So with those packets, it has all the evidences with tabs that way the USCIS officer will see that we not only have sworn letters but also we have a lot of evidences that can prove the hardship and we also include my husband's medical records because his medical doctor was able to produce a letter that states my husband which is a US citizen will have exacerbated anxiety once the two-year home residency requirement is imposed to his spouse which is me as a J-1 holder and also you have to think of this you need to be on status while filing your J-1 waiver please do not negate from any of the information that says it's okay for you not to be part of the J-1 program anymore because you're married to your U.S. citizen. Remember, it's not a guarantee for you to get a waiver once you have your U.S. citizen spouse. We all know it's hard to get and there's already a lot of J-1 teachers who are married to their U.S. citizen spouse, even have their U.S. citizen child, but still imposed to go back to the Philippines to fulfill the two-year home residency requirement so the best time to submit is on your second year as a j1 teacher and on your fourth year as a j1 teacher or j1 visa holder because you have two years to process 
your J1 waiver and based on my own experience, I am so thankful that God was able to grant me my favorable recommendation with the DS-335 in August 1, 2023 and I was able to get my waiver afterwards which is somewhere around August 25, 2023 and then by November 26, 2023, I got my adjustment of status which is the green card so those are really important dates and think about the ideas you have put that one as strong compelling evidences and think of your own relationship every case is unique to you and think of the totality of your circumstances so once you get an rfe you don't have to panic highlight the most important things that the uscis would like you to prove to them the hardship and then focus on that one. Focus on your strength together with your spouse because there's only you and your spouse that will prove this one, most especially if you are compelled to do it yourself. I did it DIY and I was able to get my waiver. This is my way of sharing my experiences to you and my ideas. So please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and give all the information that you can to other J1 teachers that we have a Filipina from the Philippines who did it DIY and was able to be successful with getting the green card. Also visit J1 River Helping Hands group through Facebook, just agree to group rules and I as your admin will accept you immediately. Thank you so much for watching and see you on my next video. God bless!